I hope I find you all well again, and as usual, feeling tickety poo. Now, welcome to Weird World Horror Movie Night. We're going to have a look at three very famous films that are all being cursed or had things happen to them. Now, the first one is The Exorcist. The second one is The Omen, and the third one is Poltergeist. Now. Let's crack on with movie night, shall we? 1973, William Fridkin set out to bring William Blatty's novel The Exorcist to the big screen, the story of a young girl possessed by a demon. But after many strange and catastrophic occurrences, many became convinced that the film set and the movie itself were cursed by a real demon. The Exorcist is based off a real-life event. William Peter Blatty wrote his 1971 novel of the same name based on real-life exorcism of a boy known through the pseudonym as Ronald Doe. Catholic priests at Georgetown University Hospital performed a real-life exorcism but had to stop when the boy managed to get free from his restraints, pull a bedspring out of his mattress and slash one of the priest's arms. Shooting of the film was also delayed when the set caught fire, destroying what was supposed to be McNeil's home. The incident was blamed on a winged creature with talons. It seemed a pigeon had found its way into one of the circuit boxes, which caused the fire. However, the fact that Reagan's room was unharmed by the fire is still pretty creepy. During filming, actress Ellen Burstein, who plays Reagan's mother, was actually injured when the possessed Reagan throws her to the ground. This tape was actually used in the final film, and the blood-curdling scream she lets out is completely genuine. The injury still bothers her to this day. Many believe that the actual film was cursed and that playing it through a projector was an invitation for demonic possession. Televangelist Billy Graham stated, there is a power of evil in the film, in the fabric of the film itself. When it was first released, the film was banned in every Middle Eastern country but Lebanon. The re-release was also banned in Lebanon. During the Roman premiere, audiences had to fight their way through a torrential downpour accompanied by thunder and lightning in order to get to the theatre. Many inside claimed to hear horrific, almost demonic cries coming from outside once the film started rolling. At one showing, a woman was so frightened she passed out in the theatre and broke her jaw when she fell. She later sued the filmmakers, suggesting that subliminal messages caused the accident, and Warner Brothers settled out of court for an undisclosed amount. <laughs> the story of the Omen's special effects consultant, John Richardson, is the most uncanny and spooky cursed movie event in history. Richardson created the Omen's iconic death scenes. Among the most remembered is the beheading of photographer Keith Jennings. Anyone who has seen the Omen remembers Jennings' head being separated from his body by a plate of glass, bouncing through the air and flying into the collective nightmares of mid-1970s America. A few months after the release of The Omen, Richardson was in Holland, working on a film called A Bridge Too Far. Just after midnight on Sunday the 13th of June, 1976, Richardson and his assistant Liz Moore were involved in a deadly car accident. The head-on collision killed Moore, who was cut in half by the other vehicle's wheel, mirroring the on-screen death of the photographer from The Omen. Now that itself is weird and tragic, but it gets even weirder. Richardson, dazed from the collision, opened his eyes on the lonely road. The first thing he saw was a kilometre marker reading Omen 666. The closest town to the accident was Oman in Holland, and the accident happened at kilometre, get this, 66.6. .6. Spooky. Richardson's crash was the culmination of the Omen curse, but weird occurrences 
around the film date back to its very inception. The producers scored big by landing Gregory Peck to star as Ambassador Thorne, but soon after Peck agreed to appear in the movie, his son shot himself in the head, leaving no note. Although wrecked with grief, Peck didn't let this suicide deter him from starring in The Omen. He flew to England in October 1975 to start work on the movie, but he almost didn't make it across the ocean. In the middle of a stormy, turbulent crossing of the Atlantic, Peck's plane was struck by lightning. According to The Omen's producer, Mace Newfield, the engine caught fire and the plane nearly crashed into the sea. A few days later, lightning struck Newfield's plane as he crossed the Atlantic too. Two planes, two lightning strikes. What are the odds? Steven Spielberg's 1982 film Poltergeist is a beloved horror classic using inventive special effects and compelling character development. The movie is frequently ranked amongst the greatest entries into the genre of all time. But the movie seems to have come at quite a price. The legend of the so-called Poltergeist curse began at the same time the movie was released. Actress Dominique Young, who made her debut in Poltergeist as the elder sister of Carol Ann, was strangled to death by her former boyfriend, John Thomas Sweeney, in the wake of an argument between the two of them. She was put on life support after the attack, but passed away five days later. Next in the string of spooky deaths was that of Julian Beck, who played the doomsday merchant Kane in Poltergeist 2. Beck would not even live to see the release of his film. He passed away at the age of 60 after a battle with stomach cancer on September the 14th, 1985. A third death of an actor associated with the film started rousing suspicions. Will Sampson had played Taylor, a Native American shaman who protected Carol Ann in the second film in the series. He died on June the 3rd, 1987 after a lengthy illness caused by a chronic degenerative condition. He was 53 years old. But probably the most famous death of all is that of Heather O'Rourke, the young actress who played Carol Ann in all three films. Doctors had been attempting to repair an acute bowel obstruction, but they could not save the young girl. She was pronounced dead on February the 1st, 1988. She was just 12 years old. Welcome back, my little lovelies. I hope you enjoyed them. Something different for you? Now, there's lots of conspiracy theories on these movies. Tons and tons of stuff out there. If you want to go and Google any of them, you'll find tons more information. I couldn't include everything because this video will go on and on and on for about an hour. And you don't want to see me for an hour, do you? Right. Welcome to all the new subscribers. Enjoy. Get involved with us. Any of you got any new stories? Send them in. You never know, you could end up in a film with us. That's enough from me. Until next time, my little lovelies, you all take care of yourself and stay safe. Ta-ta, my little lovelies. Ta-ta.